I have longed to be on the pulpit to preach because this is what I know how to do it. If I left all the other businesses, this is the business that I know how. But in my many things, many words, many messages have come and I have felt they are all very, very good and I've been asking the Lord, what should I tell the church the day I, I appear again? And in one of those uh, uh, moments, uh, the Lord took me to First Samuel, this is First Samuel or Second Samuel, uh, chapter 30. Yeah, First Samuel, uh, chapter 30. And uh, it is the story of David. When David comes back uh, to Ziklag and they find that the, the city is burned, their wives have been taken captive, their boys, their daughters. And the Bible records that David and his men gave them into crying until they could not cry anymore. Full stop. The following verse, the following couple of verses, when they finished crying, all of them, the rest of them were ready with the stones to destroy and finish David. So in other words, although they had no strength to cry anymore, they had strength to stone David. And what I was saying is that it doesn't matter. You can go to Catalonia and pray and fast. But if you are not careful, you can still have strength of destruction. Which is so, um, it, it is something that sometimes you wonder why. We go to the encounter, we come back from the encounter, we are saying hallelujah. I will never touch a fly. My wife will be sweetie and honey. We will take tea twice at Java. And all that promise from this pulpit after a couple of days, somebody in that family says, Hey, Jama Mekua Kitu Ingine. What turns around? So those are the questions that I was asking myself. But then this God was, you know, he he the one that actually got into my spirit was where David, after they took stones. David stopped and encouraged himself in the Lord. And I want to tell you, it is a second. It is not taking a whole day. It is taking seconds. And I know you can stand in a fraction of a minute and encourage yourself in the Lord. And your life changes and you change your circumstance. Because David encouraged himself in the Lord. And I think encouragement there simply means he went back to the archive pulled up a few things and said, God, I know you delivered me one time from Goliath. I know you delivered me one time from Saul. I know you delivered me one time from the lions. I know you delivered me. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Secondly, he also encouraged himself by knowing who God is. Because at a time you need a fraction to know who God is. When the whole thing is turning around, when there is no strength in your bones, when everything looks like it is end, you encourage yourself by knowing that God is there. And you need to get to that level where you say like the, this uh, uh, three Hebrew boys who say, we know that our God is able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, he is God. After he encouraged himself, now I want you to see the miracle. This is what I was seeing. You know, you get to a place and God is showing you great things. I've never preached about this. But within a second after he encouraged himself, I think he was speaking. In his encouragement, he was speaking. Then he said, God, shall we pursue them? And I think they heard a voice. Pursue them. You will not only overtake them, but you will recover all. And at that point, the stones went down. And may the people that have stones towards you as you encourage yourself in the Lord. May you charge the atmosphere for the Lord. Hallelujah. Because these are the same people who pursued and overtook and overcame. And you're the same person that is going to do it. So it doesn't matter where you are at this point. Then the Lord draws me to the message that I want to share with you. What do we do when the brook, uh, when the brook dries up? I know we have had this sermon many times. But the question is, what do we do? What can I do? First Kings 17, verse 1 to 7. And Elijah, the Tishbite, who was the inhabitant of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, 
There shall not be dew nor rain these years. I think Ahab was waiting. According to whose word? <laughs> this man of God says, according to my word. After he finished, because it is good to know that when you stand for God, God will stand for you. As he said, those who are the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide yourself by the brook of Chariot that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and have, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Chariot that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and fresh in the morning and bread and fresh in the evening and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Our Father, if you can speak to me and speak to anyone here today and change our life and our thinking and move us from our dried brook, that will be the joy of the Lord. If we can learn why they are drying up, why do you want us to be in those situations? And live with that knowledge. Glory and honor is unto you. Therefore speak to us because your servant is hearing. In Jesus' name. The Lord told Elijah to go to tell Ahab that it was not going to rain. Now, that's what I want you to know. But as, uh, as, uh, as Elijah was going, he internalized the word. The Lord is the one sending him to go to Ahab and tell him there will be no rain. But as he walked, he internalized the word. He made the word personal. There is no word of God that can help us until we personalize it. I tell you the truth. It is when that word becomes a part of you, in your system, it was no longer what God says. It is because I have agreed what God says. Now this is what I'm saying. You know, it is good to hide ourselves. It is good to hide ourselves under the greater ones. But sometimes the devil wants to hear, do you believe it? And do you? Does it work in you? Or you just tell others about it? Do, 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 do you believe it to that point? So the Lord told Elijah to tell Ahab. But when he went, he told him, this is my word. It was also then the Lord after that who told Elijah to get up, turn east. And go hide thyself by the brook, Chirith. Elijah must have thought, when you do something like this, don't you sit around and show the people that the mighty man of God has said no rain. And there is no rain. But you know God was saving Elijah from Ab. You cannot do that in the country where there are rulers. They will kill you. So God is telling Elijah, we watch a kuwa bongolala, jinga. Tena hiu kujisifu, utakufa. Pride comes before a fall. I want you to hide. Let nobody see you. Because after all, it was not your word. And God will give you instructions. Because the danger is, the more you sit where you are, where there is victory, if you are not careful, you give that testimony for too long, finally you start showing off. Nani kama mimi. Umeona chuma. But I've heard of some preachers. And I'll come here, umeona chuma. So I was asking Bishop, Bishop Masindi, chuma ni nini? Ni dinga. Na dinga nao ni nini? Eh, when he said chasa, that's what they call me. When he said chasa, chuma ya ngufu. Mini kama ambia ya mwisho, so if you're not careful, it, it starts by you praising God for the victory. But before long, your testimony can turn around to your wisdom, to your knowledge, the power you have, the way you hear God, and the way you are more prayerful than others, and the way you are the only one in your family. Actually, you are the only one living in such. If you are not careful, God will have to save some of us and take us away from what God has done so that we can humble ourselves, so that we can know it is God. I, I said in the first service, you know,
know, chances for Jimmy and Alice to say what visionary they are is there. But like I said in the first service, I am sure there must have been a person, a Christian, somewhere who looked at Zimmerman and said, can there be, why can't there be a church in that place? So we are just a fruit. We are just a growth of some people that prayed for that. Your salvation, your marriage, your children, your job. There is someone who whispered something about it. If you stay there too long, James, you will show us your certificates. And God, actually, do you know God? When he starts blessing us, he blesses us until we wonder. Nemini, Karibuji, Professor Kahube, Nini, Nini Professor. And then, you know, as you do that, what God does, He takes Kahube, because I know Kahube, no matter, I don't know how many I interview him. You know, he, Kahube goes up to a place where he doesn't like talking a lot. You know, there's a story he doesn't talk, like talking a lot. How he left his salary. See him for another day. Now what I'm saying is, God will always, he, he has a way. But if you stay there too long, you will think that we are all Pongolala, you are the only wise one. Isn't it? You think you are the only one who can multiply money, shillings and so on. If you, God has to save some of us and hide us so that he can do something that I will tell you as I try to finish. I will not finish the sermon, but as I share half of this someone that I have. So, I get up myself like Elijah in the morning and God gives me bread. I wake up in the morning and God gives me some water or tea or something. I go in the evening, God gives me the same. If I'm not careful, I might forget that there are many others that were like me at one time, but their brook dried up. So, what can I do when my brook dries up? God blesses me in the morning. I know that. God blesses everybody in the morning. God bless Elijah also in the morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The brook God told him to go to, the place God ordained for him to be sustained, the place that he was to go to, was the place where he was going to get strength, but the, that which was going to be refuge and strength for him dried up. Let me, let me say to those who are content to just come to church and go home the same way every time they come, that maybe this will not mean so much for them. But for those of us who desire closer and personal walk with God, this message is key to understanding the ways of God. Because there are some ministries that are seated on the pews. There are some graces that is seated on the pews. There is some power that is seated on the pew that God needs to open. And I thank God that I was in the pew, but God called me to go and serve him. But before God can trust you to be used greatly by him, you must understand what to do when the brook dries up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the first service, I had a problem because there is nobody who has gone to a boot camp. But again, Mr. Kahombe has gone to a boot camp. And a boot camp, I said, in the first service, some of us know about it. Some of us have heard about it. Some of us get scared about it. I wanted to be an Air Force anything. You get that? So, my cousin who was working there, Sergeant so and so, without mentioning name, had worked and he prepared and my name, everything. They were waiting for me to cross on the other side. And I was slimmer than I am. Sometimes I think I was taller than I am. I was athletic. I was playing 
volleyball and soccer and everything, I look good. But as I queued, the queue was long. But as I queued, I was getting closer, closer. In my heart, I was asking myself, really? I had a test and preaching. I had gone to Uganda and preached. People getting saved. I've, I mean, I'm wondering, God, what are you calling me to do? Is it to preach? Is it to, to, is it Air Force? Of course, then I, I answer myself. I said, of course, sina chapa. Kama saia kuditao, sina, 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 sina 50 cents. Tafanya nini? So in one side I have a need, in the other one I have a call. So I, when about 10, 12 people ahead of me, the mungu can I usually this is what you, you need or you need money. Say mm. So I left the queue. I've never gone to Air Force easily unless to visit my brother or that cousin of mine who was there and so on. I left. Because people were also very sympathetic with me, oh Jimmy, you know, you know. I also got some letters to go to Kitui to register persons. Maybe I would have gone to Mwingi to register persons. I had all the papers because people are concerned. And I'm going to Jogo House so that we can give our names and then I'm given uh, the money for transport and I take off to Kitui. When I'm climbing the stairs, the same voice comes. Is it the 20 shillings you need? Or what do you need? And I tell you, friends, when you are here, when you hear the voice of God and obey, I took off from Kenya with a flight that I never paid a penny. I went stayed in Sweden and I went to school without paying a penny because I obeyed. If I went to Kenya Air Force, I would have never gone where I went. The providence of God. Bless the name of the Lord. So it is good to wait and to hear the instruction of God. It is God who is telling Elijah, go tell him. But he's also Elijah now telling him, run away, hide yourself, and I'm going to provide for you the question I ask myself. Did that thing happen immediately? Hear to what God is telling Elijah. Go there because already today, from the calendar, when from the foundation of the earth, I knew that today you need the bread and you need the meat and you need some water. There is a place that I prepare for you. All what you need is to obey. Take left, take go east. Don't go west, go east. And in the valley, go lower there. At the valley there, I'm going to feed you every morning and every evening. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Boot camp, boot camp. I know that many of us have never been in a boot camp. They don't know about it, but they hear about it. Some of us who have never been say we know what boot camp is all about, but only those who have been can truly say they know what a boot camp is or a basic training of military is all about. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. In my mind, tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe that a boot camp for most is the first time that some of the young people leave the, the, the facilities of their parents. And they go to a place where the Tumi and Neno Ambalo is not parliamentarian. Hakuna mama and, and you are laughing when I'm here with you. Actually, when I'm here straight, Hapa Hakuna Mama Yamutu. Now, I say, Masa, yes, sir. Hakuna Mama Yamutu, sir, yes, sir. Boot camp. Now, this, I have never been there, but <laughs> you can. You can, so those that went, you can help me. <laughs> but it is a place where you learn to be disciplined. And they discipline you pole pole until by the time you leave, an officer passing, you just stand whether they are looking at you 
or not you do? Because if they turn around and see you not, oh oh. So they discipline you in a way, you know. What has fear? Wale tulisoma wakati wa mubebelu. Amen? Mubebelu. Zata tunaona mzee. Sii kuzoma wakati wa mubebelu. Lakini likuta matigali. Oh, those matigalis were serious. You could not sit when they are passing. Walimu. Hey. Si utachapwa. Kwa mwalimu ukimona, unasimama. Na lazima usimame vipoa. <laughs> Sometimes I imagine una viatu minyururu ya kadhalika na vitu vingine. <laughs> it's a place where you learn about discipline. You find out real fast what a full day of work is all about because if it is 8 hours in the forest it will be 8 hours. If you are working on your stomach it is working on your stomach. And they make it really hard. I have friends. Me, I was going to Air Force. They went. Those ones actually succeeded to leave, to enter the, the, the barracks. And they were taken for training to Nyanyuki. And some ran away. Because you see, they thought, Utakuwa kwa ndenge muna bebwa. Atichwa na kandenge. Hakuna bwana. Kapla ujaidia na kuguza ndenge. Hata kama ni teknisia, kuiguza, hii ni just to, to touch it. Si mwanda utafundishu wa kuwa military, si utayana na tumbu. Si utapigwa na maofisa wa tapiga rizasi, na utapigwa rizasi, hata kama ni bullet ya rapa. Si hiko na uchungu. Kwa hivyo wa zimba ikipigwa nyote, shini. Alafu mmoja naambia, the only way to escape is through that corner. Sasa muna anza na tumbu. <laughs> Mukienda kufika pale unaona kumetubu waka kitu kakuazdua. Tua kadafanya white huko munaona. Eh? <clears throat> My friends, came back. But those that persevered, amen, those that persevered, God has blessed them. Wengine waliritaye wakiwa makoro na una brigadia. Marafiki zangu. But I still remember one. Air Force. Uyu. Alikuwa na bahati. Ye hakuwa na natubo. Alipere kwa ulaya. Unajua kuna watu walikuwa connection kidogo. Wakapere kwa ulaya kuendesha ndege. Chida yake ilikuwa hivi. Akichukua ndege, anaenda. Akiambua kumanuva harudi chini, mguu, inakosa grease, anarudi chini. You know, you know the way they go up, then you come down, then go that. Iyo, grease ilikuwa inaisha? <laughs> Alikuwa kituambia, ye ya natuwa kuenda na hile tu, hile kubwa bufa, minaenda bufa. Arafu inaanga vizuri. Haka kengine kakuenda, chua, arafu kana piga chindi. Akienda kujaribu, nasikia ni kama matumbo inataka kutoka. Anyway, boot camp. Boot camp. But, 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 but today he's a big man. Finally, he will go to I don't know how he came out of it, but he is. It's a real place where you find work. It is also a place where the military train their soldiers into what they want them to become. It's a place where the men and the boys are separated. It's not a place of mummies, boys, and uh, whatever. A boot camp is a place where you learn about war. It's not a place where you go play games. It's a place where you learn how to succeed in battle. I'm sure in a boot camp, a soldier is stripped off their self-will. No wonder it is yes, sir. It is no longer your will. No wonder a lot of big people's children, none of them go to the army. Big people's children. Because I'm going to tell you, hapa hakuna mama ya mtu. 
na saa hiyo I almost gave you another story. Stories can be many. It is not a place of mummy's children. They learn what is important and what is not so important. It's a place where young men and women lose their rebellion. They learn what is to follow orders. They learn how to follow leaders all the way to death or to escape if need be. They found out at boot camp that you cannot retreat, you cannot give up, you cannot stay home, even if you feel like it. You have to go to war if there is war. You may say, Pastor, what are you getting at? I'm telling you that all training, whether it is the training of the people of God, the discipline and the pressure that a soldier goes through, it is that pressure that makes the soldier strong. It is that pressure that a Christian goes through that makes the Christian strong. It makes him stronger. A Christian who is stronger, it makes him more disciplined. It makes him more mature as a soldier or as a Christian. You cannot do that by reading books. You cannot do that by just watching television. You cannot do that by listening only to other people pray. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. A soldier has to leave the, con the comfortableness of home and he put in a place alone where it is dry and it is lonely because you have to be personal. God is looking for me. He wants to put me in a boot camp. He tells Elijah where to go. Why? Because he wants him, not the company. He wants him and God wants you and God wants me. I'm here to tell you that boot camp is a place where the military sends their soldiers to teach them a whole lot in a short amount of time. At the police one under me is a Akirudi. Ata wakikuyu. Wanaongea kiswahili ya kinandi. Kabisa, kabisa, kabisa. Wege tana na. Because those years, diyo walikuwa weki kwa police. Are you kidding the point? Unakuta mtu ni mkamba kabisa ata accent. Alafu na mwongele cha kikuye na kwambia, Ejana, hiyo gitu gani? Na unawana china hapa imeandiku wa karancha kama u. Yeni wamefundishwa, six months akirudi. He, si jamawa na kuwa wakari, yata kama ni your brother ukijifunika kitu ingine, utamuona. Labda ni utoe ya kone, zama, oh sorry, 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 kwa tu ni studi ya kazi. Because they really go through a trade for a short time, Lakini, order na discipline inakuwa pale. May God help us. And I think that is what Elijah, God wanted Elijah to learn. Soldiers, they learn a lot for a very short time. But what the soldier does learn in a short amount of time is essential to his survival on the battlefield. I can honestly say since I've been in the ministry, and especially since I've been a pastor, it has been a long boot camp, learning on what to do because situations are not the same. Bless the name of the Lord. We are in a boot camp. We are in a boot camp. God's boot camp. I thought I knew what living for God was, but I'm learning. Uh, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning what to do when I'm alone. I'm learning what to do when there is, I'm overwhelmed. I'm learning what to do when, when I'm in a hole, a fox hole. When I'm hiding that hole, I, just myself and God and the devil. I know now, Bishop, what are you talking about? I'm talking about even when you are at Cataloni with God, the devil is there. See, I told you, you can come from an encounter. High up there. But if you're not careful, it takes a little while for you to turn into something else. May God help us to differentiate the voices. When we are in that hole of the fox and we are praying, we are alone and lonely. With God alone, let's remember that the devil can be very, very close. The devil can be very, very, very close. 
I submit to this congregation that God has a boot camp for all of his soldiers and you are in his soldier. It is not voluntary. It is not optional. It is not a suggestion. It is mandatory. Bless the name of the Lord. If you are going to fight in God's army and if you are going to be successful in the battlefield with the Satan and all his army, you are going to have to make it through God's boot camp. Here is where we find the light. God has want to take him there. When you think of Elijah, there are usually two events that come to mind. One of the events that is so great is when the whirlwind comes and is taken by chariots. Oh man, we say, God, one of these days, when we tell pastors they are going to retire at 65, so you can tell I'm not 65 yet, when we tell pastors they're going to retire at 65, somebody says a partner, Bishop, what they are saying is, God, bring some chariots. That when I'm preaching, I'm a chariot. May God help us. Every, every one of us gets scared. Other judges are scared. But even if at 74, 74 will still come. The university is 74, 75. But it still comes, eh? Si nakutaka tu nakuta mtu umeka. Ameka KU wajatoka ile nyumba alipeo. Arafu 75 inafika. Eh? Ruth ananiambia after 75 anarudi huko. Kwa sababu hakuna kwa kwenda. Can I add another contract for three years? Nobody wants to go. No, it's your pa pastor. Hey, what, what are you going to do? Judges are going to go. But pastors are going to go. But retirement, actually, it will come. Like it? Or oh, not? So we remember Elijah on that. We also remember Elijah on this victory context on Mount Carmel. Bless the name of the Lord. He is there winning. But let me remind you something here. Before you can be trusted by God to stand on Mount Carmel, there must be a time for you to pass through a dry brook like now where Elijah is put because Mount Carmel is coming and God knows, but he has to trust you there. He has to trust you here. I'm here to tell you servants of the Most High God that desire to be used by God, that if God is going to use you, it's good for you to know he must train you and he must also break you. He must break you. It, and it is divine order. You see it in the breaking of bread. Luke, Luke chapter 22 verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave unto them. Notice, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it so that he could give it out. And for you and for me to reach the world, God has to lift us up Break us up so that he can release us. Because if you are released the way you are, Germany. <coughs> One of the things that I have discovered, and I will tell you this without, because one, mimi ni Now what I have discovered in the process is there are people whose world view is defined by their culture and their tradition. And the Kikuyus are getting back there. What are you trying to do? You are done with I'm trying to say there are people right now, they are training the Kikuyu so hard to be, to be Kikuyus first and then Christian. But I tell you, friends, Let's be Christians fast. Then it will define my kikuyu with them. I pray that you can be a mkamba, a Christian first, which will define your kamba is them. Be a, a Christian first. It will define whatever tribe you are in. Otherwise, sahi, every tribe is running back to their cocoon. No wonder. Where are we going to get unity from? Because even pastors with the collars and so on, they are behaving that way. And I had to stop someone. You have come to my house. I don't believe in those things. 
my daughter is not for sale. If your envelope has nothing, I will receive it and bless her. I'm not here for business. That is it. Am I poor because I did that? Why you not do it? So I need to find I'm saying this because you meet others. Actually, they will tell you many times. You know, Bishop, we are also Christians. We are also Christians. We are also Christians. And uh, we, we, we Christians. I tell them, no, me, I'm born again. Me, I'm not a Christian. I'm born again. I wish, I wish I can teach that because I feel we need to teach ourselves though, so that. Because you have already agreed. Yeah, equally out. How do I do I tie this? Because I want to to finish. So you have to be broken. There is no shortcut. There is no easy way. Let me warn you, living for God is not easy. It is not for babies. God is not trying to baby us. No. It's not for babies. God wants you to be ready. Go through the boot camp so that you can be strong for him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why I ask, what do you do when your brook dries or runs dry? Before it is all said and done, God is going to find out if you really love him. He's going to prove you, test you, and try you. And each and every one of us will be tried differently. Like it or not, there are foundational lessons that we must all learn. Lessons like trust, faith, and obedience, and faithfulness. It is much easier living for God when trust and faith and obedience and faithfulness in God's word is not an option. It will be easier for you. But when those things are option, then living for God becomes hard. How many people keep on praying for revival in this church? You pray for revival in this church? Only you people? Let me see how many people pray for revival. The others don't pray. And then the majority. How many people don't pray for revival in this church? <laughs> how many people don't pray for nothing in this church? Let me tell you. One of the ways for revival is when God touches you, holds you, and you become accountable. For example, there are three days that are very, very important for this church. Three days. Very, very important for this church. Are they three? There are four. Four days. Very, very important for this church. One is this service. This is very important, isn't it? The other one is tomorrow, Monday. And then the Bible study and your cell meeting day. Four. Is it possible for you to pray and believe God that at least the church wants two you will be available. Either Sunday and Monday or Sunday and Wednesday. And if we do that on a serious level, revival will break here like you have never known. People will get healed here like you have never known because we'll be serious people for God. It is not like I'm going because I have nothing to do. I'm going because I have planned to do it. I want to be in the cell, but in the cell sometimes we are three, sometimes we are four, sometimes we are six. Why don't to the six from the cell, at least one day, the six from the other cell, we meet here, the 30, the 40 or so, and we kneel down. Remember the prayer we prayed here from Reverend Wade the first time I called all of you, you are almost packed here. We knelt down and a few things happened then that have caused Reverend to be moving the way he is moving. I tell you, unity, prayer of agreement, to us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I know we don't like to think of it in those terms, but it stands. It stands to reason before God can we really can God really use us? Because He must remove from us all that hinders His will from being done. Elijah, 
has just stood before the king of Israel and delivered the message of judgment that God had given him. Now God says to Elijah, go hide yourself. Me and you would want to stick around for all the, the, the splendor and the beauty that people will come and photo us because we are great people, there is no rain. But God says, all right, you did what I needed you to do. Now get out of here, go hide yourself. It seems to me that God would want to keep Elijah in the face of Ahab. He wants to save him. But God's ways are not our ways. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God's ways are not our ways. You see, God has a plan. Hallelujah. He wants to transform Elijah from Elijah the Tishibite into Elijah the man of God. I want to say again to accomplish this, God is going to have to send Elijah to a boot camp because God wants to change you. Look at your neighbor, ask them. Well, na ito nani? Wawapi? Nani wawapi? Now tell him God wants to change you. Now we take in a locket from here, Kijiji, into becoming a servant of God. God wants to change you from that Kabila of yours so that you can become a servant of God. God wants to change me from that Karateism so that I can become a servant of God. Are you hearing? Unity in this country will never happen. As long as people have refused to go to the boot camp of God so that I can change the Tishibitism in me to become the servant of God. We'll continue. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. How many people, how many people are telling God, God, yes, I need change. I, I, I need I need I need you to change. Let's all stand. I'll ask the worship team if they can come for one minute. We sing, we sing my favorite, one of my favorite. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. I want you to trust Jesus. We, we sing only that. That first dance. You know where I'm coming from. You are, trying, you are trying to translate it, it is not coming. Oh, hallelujah. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him out his life. Just to rest upon his promise. Enlist us in your boot camp. We want to get into your boot camp right away. Because Lord, we want you to change us. Change Kimaniism in me. The Kimani from Karateism. That my ism is going to come out so that I can be the servant of God, the man of God. Change us to be the kind of people that will glorify you. We need revival in this country. Lord God, we have to get to the boot camp. Lord God, we want to enlist ourselves in the good camp. We want change. Change us, Lord. Give us a blessed week of change in the presence of the Holy God. We honor you and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Let's make some noise to the Lord.